Well, good evening. Um, my wife Joanne and I are, she's over there, we're quite happy to be here. I'm a bit under the weather, but she says, let's go, we got to go down south. And um, my sister Mary, thank you very much for, you know, speaking about our roots, our grandmother, Tan Margit, Mag Magritan uh, Duenas, is from Inarahan, and the family is from here, so our roots go deep. And as she mentioned, every time we come down here, Mom is a, is a living history book. Her, her retention of all that's happened growing up here and the values upon which she was raised, it, it just pours out. And that's the foundation that we have been raised in. Today I had uh, gone to church and it was very interesting to hear in the sermon a man of God speak about the election. I thought, wow, this is unusual that that he would speak about um, the upcoming election, and not only here on Guam, but in the nation. I have been blessed by all of you many times over as a four-term senator, as a two-time governor, to serve as a, as a public official, as a public servant. And um, I always felt that if I would coin my leadership, it would be a servant leader. Because all these individuals here that are either incumbents or putting themselves up to run for office, are ultimately public servants. And their leadership is one of sacrifice. Um, I commend all of them for putting themselves on the line to come out here and run. But going back to, uh, the, to what that man of God had spoke about, he, he pulled up the book of Proverbs. Now, there are 31 Proverbs in the Bible, one for every day. I make it a habit of, if it's the 15th, 16th, whatever day of the month, that's what I read. He pulled up uh, Proverbs 29, 2, and he applied it to what's happening in the country. It basically says that when the people are good, or when the leaders are good, the people are happy. When the leaders are evil, the people complain. Have any of you turned on Fox News, CNN, MSNBC, and focused in on what they're talking about? There's nothing except Trump versus Hillary Clinton. And the accusations that go back and forth about who's good, who's bad, who's crooked, who's not fit, uh, who's against women, it, it's, it's sickening when you think about what's going on. And you would wonder, how can it be that we have two individuals now that are the least popular ever that, we, the, that the nation has to choose from to be the next president of the United States? Never had there been any candidates as least popular as these two individuals. But it talks about the state of where our nation is. Why am I running? Because I'm telling you, the House of Representatives is one body within Congress that is going to have to work extremely hard with either of these two individuals, whoever becomes president, to right the ship, to ensure that this nation is heading down the right path. The Democrats, what the Republicans fear is that if you have a Democratic president in place, and that would be Hillary. The next judge that is going to be selected for the US Supreme Court will continue the policies of, of liberalism. When you think of all that's been happening lately, there is anarchy in America. There is no respect for authority. When you think of all the cops that are being killed and all that's happening, the riots that occur, America is extremely anxious as a people. The you know what fear does to people? Fear paralyzes you. It's like a deer that sees a, a, a truck coming and they're just frozen in the de in, in the, with the light that are blinding them. Fear creates you paralysis. You don't know what to do. The people of the United States of America right now are, are fear, are fearful. And fear is born in the incubator of anxiety. There is so much anxiety that's going on out there. Now when I think of, and I'll do respect to the incumbent who's been there for 14 years, there's a sense of com complacency that begins to set in. The military itself, when you've got leaders in a certain position, in a command position, they're there 24 months, 36 months max, and then they change them out. Why? Because it brings in fresh blood, it brings in new energy, it brings in new focus, it brings in new direction. That's what we need right now. The focus has been primarily the military buildup. 
There are so many other things that, that people are complaining about. What did I talk about? The people are complaining. Where is, where are the results for war reparations? Where are the benefits for our veterans? Where are the equal rights that we deserve as a people of Guam and, and not to be treated as second class citizens? You need someone in there that's going to work with those on both sides of the aisle. And I tell you, I bring with me, I've got all the credentials. I've worked this island. I know what the, the, the issues are. I am of this island. My roots, my heritage, my life, my children, my grandchildren, everything that we have is vested in this island. And I want to ensure that I protect the rights of our people. Not only protect what we have, but fight for what we need to become equal and not second class citizens. We talk about the fact that we can't vote for the United States presidency. But there are so many other rights and benefits that we deserve as a people. And the problems that are there are going to require efficient and effective solutions. I can bring that with the experience that I've had. I'm willing to sacrifice. My family is willing to sacrifice. They're saying, Pop, what are we going to do? You're going to go to the U.S.? What about us? I said, don't worry. As I told you before and I told my kids many times, as they were growing up, Dad, we don't see much of you. You're too busy day and night. You leave early in the morning, you come home late at night. We don't see much of you. What about us? And I told them it's a sacrifice for you kids too. Because not only am I the father of this family, but I'm the father of the island. And they need me. And I must serve them, and, I, and by God's grace, I served for two terms, eight years. But now I'm asking, let, uh, let me bring this energy, let me bring this commitment, let me bring this sacrifice, this service to Washington, D.C to fight for our people of Guam, to fight for equal, for equality, for justice, for fairness. That's what we deserve as a people. And we need that representation in the House of Representatives. With all due respect to the incumbent who's been there for 14 years, you know, we're given a certain amount of time. 14 years is a lot that we, the people of Guam, have given her to do the job. It's time that she enjoys the fruits of her labor. It's time that she retires. And it's time that they allow, the people of Guam, allow an individual like myself to step in now and take over. And what good she's done, I will continue. But what has to be done, I will pursue. You can trust me. You know me. You know our family. You know our commitment. And um, I put myself out there. So I humbly ask for your support. And not just you, but I'm asking each of you to step out from your comfort zone. And let's talk about it. I tell you, the best campaigners I have are people like you that would talk to your family, that would talk to your friends, that would talk to those that, that are interested in this election. And to the youth that are here, it's important that you get out and vote because it's, the records have shown that the millennial, the 18 to 30 year olds, are disinterested in politics. They're disconnected. They don't care and they don't feel an affinity to the political process thinking it's going to have no effect on their lives. But we, I guess, all know, we know that it does. The leaders that you choose are going to determine if you, the people, are happy or if you, the people, are complaining. It's just massive.